How Missiles Feel in Warhammer 40k Hammer Tech? Yeah. Welcome back. Today I feel like talking about missile launchers. Specifically, their big problem. That they kinda suck which can be traced back to the Great Rules reframing of 8th edition, a classification choice which resulted in a weapon which ought to be incredibly lethal and badass, relegated to a class of subpar performance. And no, I'm not claiming that missile launchers are not balanced for their points. What I am speaking to in this video, as it often seems to be, is an intersection of mechanics and theme. It's a matter of principle. I simply find this topic to be interesting, and I thought the 21,000 subscribers of my channel <laughs> and the 76% who aren't subscribed may find it interesting as well. Wait, 76%? That's huge. It's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. That is a huge problem. So you think he has a bigger problem? I think he's got a huge problem. So if you're part of the 76% who enjoy my content but aren't subscribed, please do. It helps my channel out and gives me more sway with the algorithm gods. So, let's focus in on the claim of this video, which is the problem with missile launchers. So what's wrong with missile launchers? The short answer is, missile launchers are simply just bad LAS cannons. You heard me right. You ever wonder why the only missile launchers you see being fielded are on units which have no other option, or why you never see your variable heavy weapon units opting for missile launchers. Well, it's because they're bad. I'll elaborate. During 8th edition's weapon standardization, it was decided that missile launchers would be ruled so they would occupy the space of LAS cannons, but worse, a cheaper and worse performing alternative. This is demonstrated by the 8th edition Chaos Space Marine Havoc weapon options on screen. It's a classification choice which still reaches to where we are today in 10th edition. The crack missile profile is a worse LAS cannon, and nobody wants a worse version of a tool. Aside from fluff bunnies, shout out to my homies. Now the naysayers may claim, but Kiefer, missile launchers also have the added benefit of an alternative profile. Surely the versatility of having a crack missile for anti-armor and a frag missile for anti-infantry is a boon. And to that I say... Huh? What is it? I'm kidding, I heard you. And while those are true facts, there is a counterpoint which saps its merit. And that is, that in the majority of cases, flexible performance is not desired. And I'll get the big exception out of the way first, with regards to melee combat, Having a strike and sweep option gives tremendous utility, because melee combat has an added consequence where units find themselves now in engagement range. And while I wouldn't undervalue such utility, it is a context that does not apply to ranged warfare. But wait! There's more! You see, players often choose their assets for a specific purpose. Using the Havoc example from earlier, if I need an anti-tank tool, I'm opting for last cannons. If I need an anti-infantry solution, I'll go with the chain cannons. A suboptimal performer in multiple categories is unideal, because we want the tool that has the best odds fighting against the target's profile and the greatest enemy of all, bad RNG. From a pure mechanics point of view, it feels like nobody is opting for missile launchers, or dare I say, nobody has been opting for them. Even way back in 9th edition, when we paid for the quality of weapons a unit used, the cost to benefits of the missile launcher did not add up against its alternatives. It's the same problem I've spoken to in the past with character points based upgrades. Your on bike, with jump pack, on disc, with wings, were always worth the points because they made your tools better. Now, 10th edition has remedied this problem, which of course is a good thing but it remains here a poison, clinging desperately to the missile launcher. It seems in 40k, the old adage doesn't hold. A jack of all trades is worse than a master of one. But why does this all matter? What is so bad about just persisting under this paradigm of missile launchers being worse last cannons, 
Why create a video discussing the mechanical failings of missile launchers in Warhammer 40k 10th edition? Why not let us imagine Because it's so bit. much fun, Chan! Get really? it! For one, as I said earlier, missile launchers are a badass weapon type that deserves better than being relegated to the discount last cannon status they currently hold. And for two, I absolutely despise when rules and mechanics punish the hobby efforts of years past. And I think that about covers the problem. Now the solution, or a solution, since I don't want to just be complaining here. It's a constructive suggestion, a concept for what missile launchers could be. And no, I'm not just going to advocate to ratchet up the strength and damage like the Desolation Squad's super crack rocket launchers. Funnily enough, on this topic, I think the orcs were right all along. The Orc Rocket Launcher isn't bound by the same box which holds the Imperial Eldar or Votan Missile Launcher variants. It occupies a unique space as a variable multi-shot blast weapon, with strength and AP in line with the anti-armor profile standards set by its contemporaries, but it holds a potent consistent damage of 3. And while I think it would be rather busted to just take the rocket launcher and just make that how missile launchers work, it would also be out of character and in poor taste. This is a very orky profile, characterized by its short range and that poor orc accuracy, but it's undeniably deadly due to the absurd volley of projectiles it launches. But we can still use it as a base to work backwards from. The rationale here begins with a question. What is a missile? Well, some very meticulous internet sleuthing tells us a missile launcher is a rocket-propelled weapon designed to deliver an explosive warhead with great accuracy at high speed. Explosive warhead is the operative feature I'm honing in on here. From this we can assert that thematically, missile weapons would be blast weapons. Something the orc rocket launcher gets right. But the current iteration of the blast rule does not meet the standards I hold for a well-designed mechanic, as it fails to accurately describe what's transpiring. And this is because, what about my projectile's blast radius causes the weapon it fires from to fire more shots if the target has more individual bodies? Such a mechanic better abstracts an idea like rapid firing or rotary weapons. But do you know what mechanic does exist in the game and better abstracts explosive results? I'll give you one guess. It rhymes with constrained shits. Ah, yes. Sustained hits. A mechanic which sees the attacks made explode to deal more damaging results. But explosive warheads shouldn't only yield their payloads on critical hits. So I think we could reappropriate and modify to the conversion rule here. And since I can't call it blast, I'll call it payload. At this point, things are beginning to feel like this hypothetical weapon will invalidate our last cannon types. And since we're not going tit for tat, or in the business of making previous popular options invalid to sell a different product, let's rein it in a bit. You guys know how I roll. I like to break out of the box. So get ready for a curveball. I'd like to drop the damage down to one, but bump that strength up to a last cannon standard. <laughs> this results in what feels to me like a distinct weapon type. Like the last cannon, it's a heavy weapon with high strength, as explosive force is undeniably strong. But unlike the last cannon, that power isn't focused into a beam capable of penetrating armor as easily, and doesn't slam home big damage to a single target. Instead, the payload ability provides a greater volume of shots through a more thematically accurate mechanic, dispersing its damage over a wider area. It's also that ability which not only gives it a more satisfying game feel on the tabletop, but also gives missile launchers a distinct mechanical character. Like with plasma weapons ability to supercharge, and sniper type weapons being able to target characters. Missile launcher type weapons could, under this paradigm, saturate targets with damage which is strong, but not especially armor penetrative. Well, that's a wrap on this one. If you enjoyed this video, there are buttons for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and a special thanks to Julius Maximus, as well as my other generous patrons and channel members. So what do you think of the missile launcher problem and my proposed solution to it? 
Perhaps the numbers ought to be adjusted, but I think the intended vision is clear. Does it spark joy? Also, tell me your solution for what you would like to see done with missile launchers. As I think we can all agree, they are certainly underwhelming. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.